Greetings world, it is I, Andrew, the bearded lady from the Hairy Game Lords, and for your viewing pleasure, I thought I would bring to you my top five party games. Oh yes. So, if you're sitting comfortably, hey, I'll begin. Everyone likes a good party, but have you ever been to one where it is particularly dry? Yeah, yeah, I've been there. And what's always good is if you find yourself in a predicament like that where conversation may be not happening, the music isn't that great, the food is questionable, you need yourself a party game to pull out the bag and get the party going. These five that I have chosen for you are personally some of my favourites, but also they are guaranteed to get the laughter flowing, to get the banter going, and to create memories that will stay with you and all who play for time to come. One other little thing to say is, at a party you might not have all hardcore gamers around the table or in the lounge, but what you do need is a game that is accessible for all ages and for all gaming abilities. And again, what I have drawn out for you here is, I believe, something that will cater for everybody as long as they're up for having a good time. So let's have a look. In no particular order, let's check out number five. Here we go. The Chameleon from Big Potato Games. The Chameleon is a kind of social deduction game. What you're trying to find out is who among you is the Chameleon? Who has no clue what the answer is but is just making it up as they go along based on everybody else's clues and answers. There are a plethora of topic cards and as you can see here this topic card is inventions. There is a grid uh -huh, uh -huh, and there are answers within the grid. A couple of dice are rolled. D6, D8. They will give you a code to, uh, to locate the grid reference on here. Except one person out of the group will not have this at all. Instead, they will be looking at this. That's right, they won't have a clue of what the code is, and therefore they won't know where the answer is that everyone else does. Then you go round in a circle, and everybody describes the answer in one word without giving too much away, because hey, you don't want to reveal to the chameleon what exactly the one invention is. Neither do you want to be too cryptic so that at the end, when it comes to the team guessing who they think the chameleon is, they don't choose you because your clue was just too far out there. It's a fun, fun game. Lots of amusement, but also works really, really well if you know everybody in the room, but is a great way of getting to know people a little bit better and a lot of fun. That is the chameleon, my number five. In at number four is Code Names from Czech Games Edition. I would pick any code names for this. In this box here, it's pretty full, is both Code Names pictures, as you can see, but also Code Names the original with just the words. Code Names is a teamed game. You split into two teams and there is a grid laid out in front of everybody of either words or pictures. If you wanted to, you could mash the two together so there's words and pictures going on. Then the two people who are elected from each team get to see where all of their own teamed names or pictures are and also where there is the dodgy assassin. If 
anybody on either team picks the assassin instantly, the other team wins. Now what happens is, is those people who know where the certain words or pictures are for their team are having to lead their team in trying to point to right cards laid out in front of them. And they are able to give two clues. One of those clues is one word, and the other clue is a number. So the one word and the number indicates how many of that word links to what is out in front. It takes a little bit of brain working power to come up with the words and what often happens is you come up with a word and then you've not looked and you realise that actually you could pretty much lead them to another word that is out there that is probably on the other team or even worse is the assassin. Now what's great is is that then the team interpret your word hopefully in a way that makes sense to you and leads them to the right answers. But sometimes they interpret the word and go off on a tangent and carnage can take place. Lots and lots of fun in this game Code Names. And what's great is if you check out Zatu, there are loads of different styles of code names, not just the pictures, not just uh, the words, but there are Disney and there is Marvel. Uh, and so you can play this with all the family as well as in whatever kind of genre you like. My number four is Code Names. In at number three is another big potato game. It is Obama Llama. Oh yes, this is described as a rhyming charades game. Again, you play it in teams and you have three different types of cards. There is Solve It, where you will read out the card. For instance, Scottish morning TV host is making a wobbly pudding. The answer that your team is looking for rhymes. There's your clue. It rhymes. And there is the description there. Obviously, everyone's going to shout out, Lorraine Kelly is making a jelly. And they would be right. You would then move on to the other two on that card. And if you manage to get through all of that one card in the 30 seconds that you have, then your team will gain a point. Every three points you get, you're able to turn over uh, two cards that are laid out in front of you face down. And it is a memory game in terms of you matching up Britney Spears with gardening shears. Uh, the pictures. Mem remembering where they are, matching them up. So there's the scribe it, there's solve it, where you all you have is the answer. Lorraine Kelly is making a jelly. And you need to lead your team to that answer but without mentioning any of the words in that answer and thirdly there is act it where you have the rain kelly making a jelly but you need to act that out and lead your team through the medium of mime to that place now this is again a brilliant fun game hey all of the games in this list, just take it as they are brilliant fun. My, my family and I were in France at Spring Harvest board game holiday. We, we pulled out a Barma Llama. Sat around the table were gamers and non-gamers. And the game worked so, so well. The best memory of the night was meeting, at the beginning of that evening, my friend's in-laws. An uh, elderly couple who were, well, you know... Up for a bit of fun, but st still quite well to do. The hilarious memory is watching his mother-in-law act out. Gandhi is feeling randy. <laughs> Brilliant. I can see it in my mind's eye right now. And you guys can imagine what that would have looked like. Brilliant fun and well worth getting involved in. A Barma Llama. If you have got a Barma Llama, there's a Barma Llama 2. And also there's Santa Banta, the small Christmas edition as well. So there's loads of mileage within this game. My number two is a game that I have recently reviewed 
on this channel. Go check it out if you haven't seen it already. But it is Ginger Fox Games Taskmaster. Now this, I would say, is probably uh, a game for older people to play. Maybe kids might struggle with it, but effectively you are a Taskmaster or you're taking it in turns to be the Taskmaster and different challenges are being set around the, the group. It's a lot of fun. A lot of silly fun and I would say a good idea to pre-arrange what tasks will be picked so that if there is space and apparatus that is needed it's gone and got before that timer begins. But loads of fun. If you've seen the show you'll know what to do. If you've not seen the show don't worry you don't need to be a fan just head over and check out my review that's uh, on the channel this is a great number two. And in at number one, and really there's no particular order on these party games. All of them are a lot of fun. They do what they say on the tin. They produce fun and laughter at a party. But my number one, there has to be a number one at some point, and here it is. It is 20 Second Showdown, again by Big Potato Games. Yes, they have featured three times in this top five, but hey, they produce brilliant party games. This is fantastic. Fantastic. It's silly, it's fun. As you can see, it takes 20 seconds in a go. There's this great musical or noisy timer in the middle. And things are chosen, so there are cards that are chosen. For instance, find a plant and give it a hug. Pretend your shoe is your phone and call for a pizza. Lots of silly, silly things to do, and you've got to do them before your time uh, runs out. That's 20 seconds, and then it goes on to the other team. This is a great party game because it's a party game for gamers and non-gamers alike. It gets everybody in and everybody having fun and being silly. It's great for all ages. Children and adults can enjoy themselves with this game. It's one that certainly needs a bit of space, but creates raucous laughter and lots and lots of fun memories. In terms of party games... This one, yeah, I guess this one is my number one uh, because it just does what it says on the tin. Nice components, lots and lots of fun, loads of replayability, awesome stuff. Number one, 20 second showdown. And there you have it. There is my top five of party games. I hope that you will go off and buy these and bring them out at parties this year and for years to come and enjoy uh, creating those memories and sharing in those laughs. Excellente. Until next time, see you later.